Good evening. I'm back again this evening and uh, looking forward to a message. Trying to get set up here and get everything ready. And looking forward to everybody that's going to join us. We'll give them a few minutes to do that. And then we'll get into an open God's word. Share with you our last message about being on mission and our focus on our state missions. Good evening, Miss Becky. There's more shadows connected. Hey, Miss Judy. Glad y'all are on. Make sure everything's turned off so I don't we don't get distracted by somebody calling in or or something of that nature. Just a little bit more time, see if anyone else is going to be able to get connected with us live. We'll welcome them in and then we'll get started. Let's go ahead. I've got about a minute, a little after five. And so we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, just a few announcement type things. Uh, don't forget our blessing box. We still de need donations for it. It's going well. And uh, it's blessing some folks in our community. And so I encourage you to be a part of that by donating uh, non-perishable food items. Or if you would like to make a monetary donation, that would be fine too. Um just noticed Miss Sharon Winslet signed on. Good to see you, Sharon. Glad you're with us tonight. Um, don't forget your Myers Mallory uh, offering for state missions, which we're taking throughout this month. And our goal is $1,500. I encourage you to be a part of that. And of course, tonight we wrap up the week of prayer for our state missions. And then we've got the, one more uh, short message for you tonight, uh, thinking about missions and how we can be a part of missions and um, remind you that Wednesday night at 7, I'll be back. And uh, just to kind of give you a heads up where we'll be, we're jumping back in on Wednesday night to our study of the Baptist faith and message, our, our Baptist doctrine, what we believe. And so I encourage you to join me for that at 7 on, on Wednesday. Next Sunday morning, we will uh, jump back into Philippians. We'll be in Philippians chapter 2. I encourage you to check that out and maybe read it before uh, next Sunday morning. 
And then next Sunday evening, we'll get back to our Fire in the Word series. And uh, then next week, we'll be talking about Chariots of Fire. Uh, and so kind of the second part of uh, the chariot idea and chariots of fire in the Bible uh, that we did a couple weeks ago. So all that being said, I hope you ha are having a great day. I hope you have a great week. And I want to pray for us. And then we'll open God's word and share a short message with you. So if you'll join me, pray. God, thank you so much for tonight. I thank you for the beautiful day you've given us and a great morning this uh, morning in our worship service and all the folks that were here and all those that were watching. God, we just pray that you bless us tonight. Take this time, use it as you would want to use it uh, to impact our lives through your word. May you just share with us uh, things that help us understand how to be on mission and what we can do and, and the way we live our lives to impact the lives of people around us for the gospel. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, tonight I want to, as I said, wrap up our, our time with uh, thinking about state missions and being on mission. And, of course, we have a, a lot of opportunities to reach out to people. But a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know how to get involved. I don't know what to do, you know. So I want to talk about joining the mission or joining the work uh, tonight. You know, if you think about joining a group or a team, you know, if you go off to college and you're going to join a fraternity or sorority, you go through Rush and to be able to get invited to join one of those. Maybe if it's a ball team, you have to go try out and, and they evaluate the, how good you are and where to place you on the team and those kind of things. Uh, if you're going to play in a band or in a, in a, a production or a symphony, you have to go and audition. Uh, and, and they look and make sure and they pick the one they want to use in those roles. Um, you know, if you go to join a civic group, you have to pay dues and, and, and give whatever they require to be a part of that group. Well, one of the things we know as followers of Christ that God helps us with is uh, joining him in his work, uh, in experiencing God. Uh, the Bible study written by Henry Blackaby and Claude King, uh, they use this concept and it says that, that God is at work all around us and he invites us to join him in his work. So we, for us, you know, the work's going on. The, the work is happening. God is working. And when we see him at work, we join him. Well, what is required to join him in his work? Well, just, as a, just thinking back uh, over the last week, and the different things that we talked about. Remember, we talked about Abraham, or actually Abram, uh, when God called him. And we talked about his journey of faith, where God said, go to the place I'll show you. And Abram said, okay, I'll, I'll go. Uh, and so he did, and we saw how he followed God's call. Um, last Sunday night, we talked about the promise of God's provision, how God provides whatever it is we need. Uh, to be on mission, to work, and to do the things he's called us to. Wednesday night, we talked about building bridges, how we build bridges and build relationships to people and be able to communicate the gospel and, the, and do the ministry as we build those bridges. Um, this morning, we talked about what if the church really prayed, and uh, we'll kind of follow up on that tonight. But uh, we saw in Acts chapter 4 when, when the people prayed, they prayed for boldness. God answered. He gave. They experienced His presence. They uh, they got His power. He re they received His power, and so they were able to uh, accomplish His work. So tonight, I just want to, for a brief few minutes, look at how Jesus worked and what His instructions were for us in joining Him. So, if you've got a Bible, I'd encourage you to turn to Matthew chapter nine. Uh, as we look at Jesus and what he told us and, and how he told us to join the work uh, and what was needed uh, as he talked to his disciples and began to uh, show them and send them out. And so in Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35, uh, God's word tells us, And Jesus went through all, throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, 
but the labors are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And moving on into the first part of chapter 10, verse 1, it says, And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. And the names of the twelve apostles are, are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and, his, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. These twelve he sent out. And so look, thinking about joining God at work and what God is doing, well, part of the thing that I think we need to understand is what is it that God does? What, how does he work? What, is, what do we see him doing? And sometimes we see him at work, and it's very specific. It's very easy to see in, what, in, in the things he's doing. But I think if we understand what he did and how he did the ministry that God had given him while he was here on earth, it will help us to understand how to see what he is doing and join him, join him in it. So, so really think about what he did. Was He walked on the earth uh, wherever he went. He was teaching and proclaiming the kingdom. Uh, I mean, he went around and he talked about the kingdom of God. He talked about uh, his work, what God had sent him to do, and and told people how to enter that kingdom and how to be a part of the kingdom of God. And uh, and then he was healing, and uh, he he touched people's lives. He he fed people. Um, you know, I mentioned the blessing box. You know, I believe that's a way that God uses it for us to be able to minister and be a part and join Him in the work that he's doing. You think about all the things that Jesus did while he was here on the earth. He met physical needs. He he did all of these things so that we could see, I think, how we, I believe, how we can be involved in what he is doing. Now, I understand that for, for most of us, and uh, I'm not sure that I know anybody that has the, the gift of healing the way the apostles were given, and you know, but I do believe that God is still in the healing business through prayer and, and through our uh, helping people. Uh, and so we have some gifts that God has given us, some abilities. Um, and so we see God doing all this, meeting these physical needs, preaching and proclaiming, talking about the kingdom of God. So when I think about that, I think, well, why, why wouldn't we do that? What would keep us from following his example? to meet physical needs where we can, to do those kind of things, to to encourage, to pray for, to lift them up, and to do everything we can to lead them to the, the understanding of Jesus Christ and his grace and his salvation. And, and really, when we get right down to it, that's the mission. Uh, and so I want to talk about that and give you uh, two requirements that we find in this passage in the last part of Matthew chapter 9, two requirements uh, to join the work. Number one is compassion. Uh, number two is prayer, which we, as I said, we talked about that this morning. When you think about it and what Jesus did, it says, verse 36, uh, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Um, and, and sometimes we may not fully understand. Uh, I know I don't, and not, it doesn't really click with me what compassion is. Um, but what compassion really is, is that, that gut feeling that just, you see somebody and it just wrenches you and, and, and you just hurt for them. You sense the, the things they're going through and you want to hurt, to help. And, and you, you just, you just know, and it, it just tears you up. And, and that's that compassion. We know that Jesus in, in other places in Scripture talks about how he cried. He wept over Jerusalem. He wept over his people. Um, and so, uh, you know, that compassion is hurting for them and, and seeing them and longing to help them and, and he get, help them get out of uh, whatever it is they're facing. And so as we think about what we need to do to join the work, one, we've got to have compassion. If you look at somebody and you have no compassion for them and don't see them as Jesus sees them, as God sees them, then how are you going to be pushed or motivated to reach out and help them? 
And so we need to ask God and, and, and seek after him to become like him so we have that compassion, so we have that ability to see somebody and to see them the way God sees them, that we uh, want to give of ourselves uh, to 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 help them and through helping them whether it's physical or emotional or whatever it may be that we can help them to the cross of christ and share the gospel with them so number one is compassion number two is prayer uh verse 37 he said then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest um you know when you think about what he said there, the, the harvest is there. Uh, I picture him, and I don't know exactly where he was at. I, I haven't looked into that, but I can just picture him looking across uh, a field of grain. And he's saying, look, and he's using that as an object lesson, as a uh, something to show the disciples, look, the harvest is ready. The harvest is there, but there's not enough workers. And I think I, I sense that today. There are so many that are needing Jesus. They need to have a touch from God. They need to know a Savior. And and so I think it's just a matter of there's not enough workers. There's not enough people that are out there sharing the gospel and reaping that harvest. And, and so I think that's what Christ is telling us. You know, we need to pray for workers. We need to pray for each other. Pray for people that uh, would step up and 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 be, reach out and share the gospel uh, with people they're in, they're in contact with at work or at home or wherever they may be or even at the grocery store, you know you stop and and fill up your car with gas, that you you know the uh, cashier the attendant in the in the store that you have an opportunity to to touch their lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ and talk about the kingdom as Jesus did. Uh, you know, and, and then he says to pray for the harvest. It's plentiful. Uh, we just need to pray that we can get there and and share the gospel and that people would be responding to the gospel uh, through our work and, and God's work in us and through us. Um, so I think the requirements to join God where he's at is to have compassion. We have to hurt for them. We have to see the need and understand the need uh, of the people there. And obviously, they have physical needs. We have people in our communities uh, all around us, everywhere we live, you know, whether it be, you know, they have needs of physical things, they have need of healing, they have need of relational issues that they're dealing with, financial things. We need to see those needs and meet those needs as best we can. And at, at every turn, every case, if we can meet those needs, then that helps us to build those bridges that we talked about Wednesday night. Helps us to be able to to be have an opportunity to share with them the gospel of God's kingdom. Uh, and then we we need to pray. And I mentioned that this morning. What if the church really prayed? What would happen? And so I think that those two things really to to wrap up our week of focusing on state missions and and being on mission. Uh, prayer is so important. We can't stress that enough. We need to be on our knees and on our face before God, crying out to him for uh, an awareness, a compassion for our workers to go into the harvest. Uh, and we need to be those workers. I mean, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to kneel down and say, God, provide heart workers, and then us not go do it, not, not be that worker. We, we, we answer our own prayers if we'll just follow Christ and, and do what he's taught us to do, what he's shown us to do. Um, Jesus shows us that he is working. He, is, he does it over and over again. He tells us how to join the work. Uh, and so when you see people, do you have that compassion? Do you have that heart that just breaks when you see people in need? And, um, you know, how are different analogies, you know, Jesus said they were, uh, in, in other parts of scripture, they're like sheep without a shepherd. They're just wandering, just roaming and, and really have no direction, no purpose. And, and do you see them and have compassion and, and, and weep over them? Um, have you prayed for workers? Have you, have you sat down and said, God, provide work. Let me be a worker, but provide other workers, uh, people that can, can step up and learn and share the gospel. 
Um, uh, have you prayed for the harvest? Have you prayed for those that that you see every day, those people that you come in contact with, whether it's a coworker or a family member, that you know needs to hear the gospel and pray for that harvest, that, that God would provide opportunities and you would step into that door and, and use what God has given you to be able to share the gospel with them. Um, and so I encourage you, pray. Pray tonight even. Uh, that this week God will provide a heart of compassion, uh, that he will provide opportunities uh, to reap the harvest that he is going to move and he will work in the lives of people. And as we live our lives before them and share with them the love and the, the grace of God, that they would respond and and join uh, God's family Um you know, I just encourage you to, to really take some time and pray tonight over the week and, and so that we would be prepared uh, to do what God has called us to do and follow his example. And I want to close with this. And, of course, it's nothing new, but it is our commission. When we talk about being on mission, God has given us the marching orders. He has told us what to do. And we must have that compassion when we pray. He says in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Could you imagine these disciples walked with Jesus for 12, or for, excuse me, these 12 and others for three years. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, yet some doubted. Is that not just like us? that we've seen God at work, we've seen what he's done, we understand and have, have been uh, blessed by receiving his grace. And yet so many times we doubt, we doubt our abilities, we doubt God's power, we doubt his presence. God says, I'll be with you because that's what he last thing he tells us. And then he gives us that great commission, verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What a great promise that God gives us. We, we sometimes question, can we be on mission? Can we do this? God says, yes, he's going to be with us. He's going to walk with us. He's going to guide us and teach us and show us. We must have the compassion and hurt for people enough to know that without a touch from God, without that harvest taking place in their life, that they are going to spend an eternity separated from God. That ought to break our hearts. That ought to just burn in us and give us the, the desire and the drive to want to share with them. We need to pray for them, that they would turn, that they would not keep walking away from God and keep reject, rejecting his invitation to join his family. And we need to make disciples. And I challenge you and encourage you, take some time tonight and pray. Pray in the morning before you go off, whatever you've got to slated for your day, whatever your calendar is lined up for. You pray for opportunities to be able to see people the way God sees them and to have the boldness as the disciples prayed in Acts 4 we talked about this morning. That they prayed for boldness and God answered that prayer and helped them to accomplish the work that he had given them to do. I just believe that God is going to do some great things when we sit down and we pray and take some time and ask the Lord of the harvest to send workers and we become one of those workers. We become one of those laborers that are out there reaping the harvest. And God will do a mighty work. And we will see some great things happening if we will just pray and have compassion. Let me pray for you right now. God, give us a heart of compassion. Let us see people the way you see them. Let us see people in such a way uh, that it hurts us to know so much that we've got to be bold and got to speak the truth, speak about the kingdom, and show them the way to go. 
God, when we have opportunity, help us to meet needs just like you did, whether it's through uh, feeding somebody or just uh, a, a touch of encouragement or prayer, uh, uh, whatever it may be, God, just help us to identify opportunities and take advantage of those. And God, I pray for everybody that sees this, everybody that's watching now or may see it later on, that you would just give us a new uh, a new fire in us to be able to be on mission for you. God, I thank you for this week that we focused on missions. And God, I pray that our lives would be about glorifying you, bringing honor to your name as we live our lives on mission. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, thanks for joining me and, uh, and being a part of our study tonight. I've noticed a couple of other people signed on, Miss Carlene Jernigan and uh, Dorothy Taylor and Miss Bridget. Uh, we're glad everybody joined us. You that are see this later on, I uh, pray that you will be blessed and that God will speak to you through his word. And I look forward to being back with you on Wednesday night at 7. And uh, I hope to see you soon. I'm praying for you. I love you. And God bless you. Have a great week.